ball played forward for Leeds. This is Wallace. Ablett in front of him. Wallace still going. Still Wallace. Nobody challenges him outside the area. Ball takes a deflection. It's in the goal. Well, Neville Southall will be less than happy with that. Everybody backed off. And Wallace slammed the ball home. Can Everton get back into it? Snowden whips the ball in. Chance here. Cotty. It's there. The equaliser from Tony Cotty. Doesn't get too many with his left foot. That was good enough. Everton on the attack. Hinchcliffe whips the ball in. This is Stuart Barlow. Good headed goal by Stuart Barlow. Stuart Barlow scores for Everton to put them 1 0 up. Seagulls downfield. Flicked on in typical Wimbledon fashion. This is Holdsworth. Berry on the line and Berry scores for Wimbledon. Greg Berry scores for Wimbledon. It's 1 1. The referee at Bramall Lane today was Vic Callow, who'd sent off the two Rangers players at Anfield this week, Ferdinand for kicking the ball away. So watch what happens here when Robert Varshika is given offside. Like Ferdinand, he kicks the ball away. But this time, Vic Callow decides to take no action. That was the game's only talk. Everton then against Southampton. Ball played forward down the right-hand side for Stewart to chase. Stewart as well, holds the ball up, looks for support. Played in, up goes Bigri, chance for Ebrell. This is Cotty, great save by Besson. Cotty heads the ball over the line. Tony Cotty gets it in, Dave Besson did well initially, but Tony Cotty had the simplest of chances in the end to head the ball into what was an open goal. Southall forward, flicked on again by Bigri, here's Cotty, Bigri down the left hand side lovely ball in from Bigri, Cotty's header, good save from Dave Besant ball goes out of play, Dave Besant making his debut for Southampton having an outstanding day, there's Ablett Everton looking for a league double, a one on the opening day of the season don't forget ball driven in low by Stewart, Cotty, Jackson shoots, Besant saves driven in again but it's wide Again, good play by the Southampton goalkeeper, Dave Besant. This is Horn. Stewart. Stewart looking for an alternative. Might try a shot himself. Lays it off. Lovely ball. Chance for Bigri. Oh, Bigri wraps the ball against the crossbar and away. Great move by Everton. Nobody knew it when the final whistle went. But that was to be Howard Kendall's last game in his second spell as Everton manager. 70 minutes after the final whistle, the word came from Goodison Park that the most successful manager in the club's history had resigned his position. The news was as startling to the players as it was to the fans. Tony Cotty, scorer of the game's only goal. Did you have any inclination at all beforehand that he was going to pack up? No, none whatsoever. I don't think any of the players did. Um, I believe that he told Colin beforehand that um, none of the players had any inclination. And it wasn't until after the match that we heard about it. Did you, did you feel that things were going flat, that he might have been moving in that direction at all? I thought there was a possibility, but um, you know, you sort of carry on and you don't believe that anything's going to happen. But um, you know, it was just such a big surprise when he, when he did do it. And the actual timing of the events, really, it was all you know, uh, above the players' heads, really. Because you'd beaten Southampton and you'd scored the goal. Yeah, it was a bit of a coincidence, really. I mean, we, on the day we played quite well and we, we created quite a few chances. And uh, like I said, I scored the, the one goal and uh, we won 1-0. Um, I was just in my car after the game, driving home, and, and that was it. He came over on the radio, Harry Kendall's resigned, and that was the first I knew about it. Did he get the players together after that and explain his decision to resign? Um, no, he didn't. No, we didn't see him, and I, I didn't see uh, Howard until about three months after that. So, uh, you know, we didn't actually get any explanation from from Howard. But the chairman did come to the ground and explain what had happened, and uh, and it was obviously a case of getting on with things then. Following Howard Kendall's resignation, Jimmy Gabriel was put in caretaker control. He was well liked by the players, but they couldn't produce the form for him that would lift the club out of the doldrums.